morning. Welcome to Heartland Community Church. We have a couple of announcements before starting the service. Please turn off your cell phone. Make sure your cell phone is on silent now. And uh, connection cards. If you are new here or if you have an update on your address or telephone number, please let us know about your updates or if you are new and you are willing to connect to us, fill the connection card. We would like to pray for you. We can have your prayer request written down in the connection card. Amen. We do have our cry room available. So if you have your baby and your baby is not feeling very comfortable here in the sanctuary, you need a quiet spot with him, you can just take your little one to the cry room, change diapers, and you can still watch the service there till we have a TV on going uh, on in that room. Today it's Pastor Troy's birthday, so thank you, Pastor Troy. <laughs> Make sure you give him a hug. Make sure you wish him happy birthday. Make sure you pray for him today. <laughs> oh, yeah, he likes chicks. Yeah, kiss him in the cheek. Gustavo, remind here. Good one, Gustavo. Yes. <laughs> yeah, lipstick, no. I don't know if Carrie would be okay with that, the lipstick thing, but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. By the way, uh, October 15th, we will be serving pancakes from 9 to 9.45. There will be no Sunday school that Sunday morning so we can enjoy fellowship with each other over warm, gooey pancakes. So just join us Sunday, October 15, Pancakes with the Pastors. We also will have turkey time barbecue contest. Wow, that sounds delicious. Yes, Saturday. November 18 begins at 2 p.m. with results and awards, awards at 5 p.m. Cook a turkey, pork ribs, side dish, or a dessert. Sign up as a team or for more information, contact Kelly. Where is Kelly here today? I don't know if Kelly is here today. I don't see usually he sits over there. But we have his contact. So if you need his contact, if you are willing to put up a team to be part of this contest, just come contact the office or call, call the office during the week okay we also have his email here I don't know if it's right there in the and the, no it's not there but we do have his email if you want to talk to him and if you were excited for that will be very fun just join us for this time family time fellowship and eat a very good turkey and this is the last one uh, Trinity Church is having a coat giveaway, coat and jackets giveaway. So if you are willing to donate, if you have a lightly used coat or a jacket, Trinity Church is having a giveaway for coats. If you need a coat and you would like to receive one, will be October 21st, Saturday, from, one, from 8 to 1 p.m. And Heartland is receiving the coat. So if you want to donate, if you have a lightly used jacket or coat and you want to donate, we are receiving until October the 14th. If you want to donate, just bring to us and we're going to give to them in Trinity Church and they are having the coat giveaway October 21st. Amen? So let's pray and let's worship our God. Dear and gracious Father, Lord, you are worthy of it all. Lord, you are worthy of all the praises and honor and glory. Lord, and, and it is our desire to worship you today. Lord, what I pray is that as we worship you here, Lord, allow the weight of your glory to fall in this place. Jesus, you came to set the captives free. Jesus, you came to bring beauty for ashes. Jesus, you came to give us salvation and peace. Lord, we pray because we believe in miracles. Lord, we pray because we believe in your voice talking inside of our hearts. So, Lord, what, what comes from you shall prosper in this morning. Lord, we pray that only the Holy Spirit will speak here in this morning. Lord, allow our words and our thoughts to be acceptable to you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.
to sing. Let's stand with us, and let's turn around and greet those around you for just a few moments. you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. You are good. You are good. When there's nothing good in me, you are love. You are love on display for all to see. You are light. You are light. When the darkness closes,
He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Thank you, Lord. And yes, Lord, may everything we do here, Lord, bring joy to your heart. Our King, may you in your holy throne receive the praises and the worship we give to you this morning. Amen. Praise God. I'm here to share communion with you. But before that, I would ask you to pay attention. I'm going to read some verses in the Bible now and it will make sense when I start to explain to you why I'm reading this Bible verses. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm pretty much sure you are all familiar with this. But it will make sense when I, when I explain to you why I'm reading that. Just make clear I'm not it's not about communion yet, but it's about love. Yes, let's turn our phones off, please, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 13 says, If I were to speak with eloquence in earth's language and in the heavenly tongues of angels, yet 
I didn't express myself with love, my words would be reduced to a hollow sound of nothing more than a clanging cymbal. If I were to have the gift of prophecy with a profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, if I possessed an ending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that could move mountains, but have never learned to love, then I'm not. Because without love, we are not. And I'm sharing this because today is Pastor Troy's birthday. And I want to call my family up here with me. And you know, guys, it's hard to take Gustavo up here. But he <laughs> is coming because we want to honor Pastor Troy here now. And I want to ask Carrie just to join Pastor Troy here too. Troy, I just, <laughs> you can cry, I know you can cry. <laughs> I just want to say thank you very much for receiving our family with so much love. The words I just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 talks about love and talks about having the gift of preaching, having the gift of prophecy, having all the gifts. I can do amazing things. But if I do not have love, I'm not. And I, I already told you both this. God brought us here. I knew how to preach. I knew how to stand in front of the congregation. But God brought me here to teach me how to love with you both. So I want to honor you before this congregation. Because I'm pretty much sure if I open the mic, everybody here would have wonderful words to talk about to you, Pastor Troy. And today it's your birthday, and we honor you in front of the congregation, and we're going to pray over you, because we know alongside with all the gifts you will receive, alongside. Do you want to say something? Happy birthday, Pastor Troy. So... I know that alongside with all the gifts and cards you will receive, the most important gift of all only comes from God. Only God or Father can see into your lives and see the greatest needs that you guys have. So I'm pretty much sure the congregation will pray with us now and just pray over our pastor and his precious wife, Carrie. Carrie, we love you so much too. And we are so thankful for your your yes for this amen so let's pray just raise your hand towards pastor troy now let's the ungracious father lord we thank you for your great mercy towards this family lord we praise your name today because it's pastor troy's birthday is the day you chose to send him to the earth and lord we are so thankful for his life Lord, we pray that in this new season, you will take him for a different level of revelation of you, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you're going to renew his strength. Lord, I pray you will fill his mouth with laughter and a great peace will just rule over his heart in this new season. Lord, we thank you for his life. And Lord, we pray that in your love, and the power of your blood, you are setting a hedge of protection around all his family. Lord, I know them very well. And I know that they follow you with everything in them. So, Lord, give to them now what only you can do. Lord, alongside all the gifts, all the cards he will receive today, Lord, send him your blessings, Lord. Allow him to walk in obedience in this new season in his life. And allow your grace and your peace to rest upon him. Lord, I thank you for the gift of love you poured out in his life, Lord. And I thank you because we, as a congregation, we've been blessed for his faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, brother. Happy birthday, brother. Mm-hmm.
Hallelujah, it's beautiful and it's true. I did share with them already. I, I, it's just, it's love. Pastor Troy flows in love and I feel so blessed for that. And talking about love, we will celebrate communion now. And we are celebrating Jesus' death, his sacrifice in the cross. Because his death, it's our victory. And John chapter 15, verse 13 says, There is no greater love than to lay down his own life for a friend. There is no greater love than laying down a life for a friend. Do you know that Jesus calls you friend? Do you know that he didn't lay down his life only for the apostles, only for his mom, only for the one that were with them, with him then? But he calls you friend. I know that many of you, that many of us, we lack some sort of love, and we go through life lacking and, and thinking, Lord. I should be more loved by my spouse. I should be more loved by my friends. I should be more loved in my workplace. I should be more appreciated. Lord, I, I miss love. I lack love. But listen to me today. If this is you today, if this is the reality in your heart today, if you feel like you lack love and acceptance, there is no greater love than this. He lay down his life for you and look what john chapter 15 verse 9 says i love jesus is saying i love each one of you with the same love that the father loves me and you must continually let my love nourish your heart look how amazing is that the love of jesus nourishes our heart human beings are only human beings human beings are not perfect and we could never be satisfied with love human love we all have problems and troubles and difficulties in our relationships but the one the one who has the great love the greater love died for you so today as we share communion as you receive the cup and as we break the bread as we remember why jesus did that he laid his life because he called you friend he laid his life because he loved you so i pray today and i pray you receive that love that nourishes your heart and Jesus kept saying, if you keep my commands, you will live in my love. Look at that. Walking in obedience means I am receiving the fullness of his love. If you walk in obedience, then you will live in my love just, I, just as I have kept my father's commands for I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said, because I walked in obedience, because I followed my father's steps, my father's commandments, I was nourished with love. Listen to me, church. All the lack of love, the lack of satisfaction, the lack of acceptance that we have in our lives comes, comes, the lack comes when we do not walk in obedience. Jesus is calling you to walk in obedience. Walk in obedience. Receive from his love and be nourished with his love right inside your heart. Marcella, but what? What are you really are you really preaching about communion, about the supper, about the, the wine and the, the bread? Yes, I am. Because there is no greater love than he who laid his life for you and me we lack nothing because he paid all the price and he continues saying verse 11 he says my purpose for telling you these things is so that the joy that i experienced will fill your hearts with overflowing gladness so this is my command love each other deeply as much as i have loved you 
For the greatest love of all is the love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when a person sacrifices his life for his friends. Who did that? Jesus did. Jesus sacrificed himself in love. When we talk about the supper today, the, the, the communion today, when we look to the, 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 the wine, the grape juice that represents the blood of Jesus, was because he loved you. I don't know who failed in life to love you. I don't know the level of abandon. I don't know if your mom, your dad, if your husband, your wife, I don't know if somebody in your workplace abandoned you and you feel just so rejected and just so lost in life. But I'm here to remind you today, there is no greater love than this. He who lays down his life for you. And I pray that the same way Jesus said, he is nourishing your heart today with his perfect love. Be part of this table. You don't need to be a member in this congregation. Do you know why? Because he knows you. Pastor Marcella doesn't need to know your name. Pastor Marcella doesn't need to have your address. He knows you very well. He brought you here this morning. And he's telling you, let me nourish your heart. Receive from me. Receive my life. And let me nourish your heart with my perfect love. If you do not have your cup, raise your hand. If you do not have your cup for communion, raise your hand. Somebody will bring. Be part of that. Do not waste this great opportunity of receiving life. Amen. First Corinthians 10, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. So he said, This is my body. And he broke the bread and he gave thanks and he said, Hey, do you know why I'm doing that? Do you know why I'm breaking my, my body? Do you know why I'm allowing this? Do you know why I'm allowing all this pain? Because I want to set you free. Because I love you so much. And I know one day you're going to leave this. You're going to need this perfect love to nourish your heart. Thank you, Jesus, for your body. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice in that cross. Lord, we bring to our memories now your body being nailed to that cross, Lord. And Lord, there is no greater love than that. Doesn't matter my experience in the earth. Doesn't matter what people did to me, Lord. What matters today, it's what you did. Because of your love, Lord. Because of your great love, Lord. We receive that now. And we thank you for your body. Lord, we examine our hearts now. Just make sure you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Just make sure you acknowledge that he paid the price on that cross for your sins. That you could not go to heaven without his sacrifice. Jesus, we thank you for that. And we receive your body. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You do this in remembrance of Jesus. You do this in remembrance of his greater love. As we drink the juice today, we're going to remember that he loved more. He loved me more. He loved you 
more. So I pray you receive the fullness of his love inside of you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we honor your name. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hi, buddy. Children's Church, you can be dismissed. Mm. Kids are full of love. And they should only know love. God is good. All the time. He's good even when you're hurt. He's good even when you're good. He's good. God wants to bring a difference in your life. He wants to head you on the right track. He wants to move you in the right direction. And he wants you closer to his love than you've ever been. The title of today's sermon is Love Makes a Way. Now, Marcella, I sat there and go, God, is she preaching or am I? Because I didn't talk to her this week about any of that stuff. And I'm preaching on love today. And I had 1 Corinthians 13, the last verse in there, as, as part of my sermon. I had John 15, 13, that there's no greater love than the one who lays down his life for a friend. So I thought, man, God, I'm just going to take a break today. And she keeps going. But that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit puts us all on the same track because we serve one God with one voice. And that one voice is talking to you just like it's talking to me, just like it's talking to my family, just like it's talking to Pastor. So I think God wants us today to know His love. Amen? Now I'm here to tell you today that if you were the only person on this earth, let's say you were the only Adam, you were born first and that's all there was, Jesus still would have went to the cross for you. One person he would have went. You are that special to him. You are that important to him. One person. He cares to have that friendship with you. He cares to have that love and let you know his love. I just want to give a shout out to my 4-H family. How are you guys today? Here we have a 4-H club here. Join us in church today for 4-H Sunday. It's nice to have you guys. Listen, we're, we're family wherever we go when you love each other, when you care for each other. Remember last week I said just be nice. Be nice to people when they don't deserve it. I'll tell you if God's love is in your life or not is when someone mistreats you how you talk back to them. 
I can tell whether the truth of God's love is in you. You guys know that God's love erases any burden that you have? Well, what do you mean by that? God's love erases any burden that you have because when when you're suffering, when you're going through something hard, when you're going through tribulation, but you focus on how much God loves you, all that gets better. His love is greater than any circumstance that you have because he's already answered it on the cross. He's already answered it. What kind of love does it take for for God to send his only son down here to willingly come and say, I'm going to go to the cross because without that, they'll never be with me. The kind of love that takes on pain. The kind of love that takes on suffering for someone else's well-being. We're going to talk about Peter in that moment where they were out fishing and Jesus is on the shoreline and they realize that it's Jesus standing there and Peter jumps off the boat and and you ever notice how throughout the Bible Peter's just always ready to jump and always ready to do and always ready to put on a big scene but truly Peter wanted to be where Jesus was and he didn't want to let him down even though he let him down Peter didn't want to continue to live in that moment I think you're going to find today that even Peter let Jesus down and denied him three times, but God never gave up on him. But what Jesus did do is he started talking to him about his love. Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Why was God doing that? Why was Jesus doing that three times? It's because Peter denied Jesus three times and Jesus was breaking the curse. And why did Jesus chose to do it in front of all the disciples? It's like he didn't put his arm around Peter and say, let's go for a walk. No, he was teaching them all. And because Peter denied him, Jesus in front of the crowds, God was making it right in front of the crowd. Peter was getting ready to lead and they needed to see Peter leading and becoming in a humble state. Think of that moment. Sitting there with Jesus around a campfire eating breakfast. And he looks up at Jim and he says, Jim, love me. Sandy, do you love me? Mary, do you love me? Because Brian, he's asking you the same question. Do you love me? Because without love, we can do what? Nothing. We can't, we can't do anything. But yet there's no greater love in John 15, 13 than one who lays down his life for a friend. Because we can't fully grasp and serve in the church unless we have love. Now, too many times religion pushes us forward without love and says that you've got to do all these things to enter the kingdom of God. That's not true. When you start thinking that you've got to mark your list off to do this, this, and this to get to heaven, you're missing the point. No, Jesus' love gets you to heaven. And you loving him back gets you to heaven. That's all. The only qualification you've got to get to heaven is ask Jesus to forgive your sins, ask him into your heart, ask him into your life, and make him your savior. Say, Jesus, I love you. So when Jesus was saying, Peter, do you love me? He was building a relationship. He was building an eternity with him. Do you get that? He's building an eternity in a relationship of love. Do you love me? They were building a firm, firm foundation. And let me tell you, the first principle in walking with Jesus' love is standing on that solid concrete, that solid foundation of love. The scripture says, the first Bible verse we all learn, and we say it all the time, John 3, 16, but it says, for God so loved the world, for God so loved you, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved you first. And that's a firm foundation. 
a lot of times I wake up in the mornings and, and I'll be praying and I'll say, God, help, help me love the people through your eyes. Help me see my wife through your eyes. Help me see my sisters and brothers through your eyes. Help me see my employees through your eyes. And when I'm upset with them, help me talk like you talk, God. Change me. And the only way God can change you is by his love and your love for him. And when you love him, that spews out of your mouth and into your life and into other people. A firm foundation. Yesterday I was helping uh, out at the fairgrounds. We were setting up for the Rosewood Rodeo so Rosewood can come in and, and uh, the people can enjoy this. And I had a couple guys on the fair board around me, and we were, we were driving in fence posts with this jackhammer that's on air, and, just, and it's, it'll shove a post through anything except concrete. And everywhere there's a long beam, there was a foundation of concrete. And the guys around me didn't know that. And so I'm pulling them in close because they're, they're getting right over the top of the concrete and the Lord starts to speak to me about the firm foundation. And I said, guys, you, you need to know this in case I'm not here someday. You need to know that there's a firm foundation that runs both directions when you're underneath those beams and you can't break through it. And God said, Troy, my love's like that now. It can't be broken. The enemy can't break through it. When you stand on my love, the things of the world won't, won't make you go crazy because there's a firm foundation. Imagine walking through some of the toughest things in life that we all do and knowing that your Savior has an answer and a love for you that a will accomplish anything that he wants to in your life and you don't need to have fear. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort thee. And he's always preparing a table. And he's always anointing your head with oil. And your cup is always running over. Jesus was preparing breakfast as the disciples were coming in and they caught 153 fish because he told them to cast their net on the right side of the boat. But he already had fish on the grill when they got there. The seed was on the grill. There's always going to be seed time and harvest time. And there's always going to be cold in winter. That's what scripture says, doesn't it, Jack? There's always going to be cold in winter. Maybe somebody could tell John Kerry that in his global warming. Has he read that scripture? There's always going to be seed time and harvest time. I know that God has a plan for your life. And without knowing his love, you'll never know what that plan is. You'll never know what it's like to have a burden erased. You'll never know what it's like when you're walking through the valley shadow of death not to have fear if you don't know God's love. John chapter 21, starting with verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tyrus. And in the way he showed himself, Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in the Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and the two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Listen, I'm here to tell you today that Jesus knows where there's plenty. He knows where. This scripture proves he knows where the fish are. Those guys fished all night long without Jesus, but when Jesus showed up, it became plentiful. 
I'm here to tell you today, when you go to work, take Jesus with you. When you make an investment, take Jesus with you. When you don't know what to do, then stop until Jesus tells you to put the net on the right side of the boat. Because in him there's an abundant life and he'll tell you where to step. He'll tell you where to cast. And you know what? Be ready for the harvest. I bet the disciples cleaned those nets. I bet they took care of those nets and they got ready for the harvest that was going to come. In Luke, there were so many fish that the net broke. But I bet they learned from that experience to be ready, to get ready for the harvest. We have a God that knows all things. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. Now I've said this many times before, here it identifies John as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Jesus didn't love John more than Peter, more than Paul, more than... Did you know that Jesus doesn't love those guys more than you? He loves you the same. He loves you the same. But John understood the kind of love that we're talking about today. So John gave him that disciple. He walked around saying to himself, I'm the disciple whom Jesus loves. I want you to try that tomorrow when you're in the work day. I'm the disciple whom Jesus loves. Well, Troy, you're not a disciple. No, I beg to differ. You are because it says to go and make disciples of all nations. We all have a purpose. You have, if you're breathing and living today, you have a purpose. And it's to go and make disciples. It's to spread the gospel. I'm just here to encourage you on Sunday. I'm just here to pray for you. Do you know a pastor's got, got two jobs? One is to preach and the other is to pray. That's it. Look it up in Scripture. Preach and to pray. The rest is on you to take what we give you and to be disciples, Jack and Sarah. Man, what a powerful Bible study. I'm blown away already and I was there one time. And I felt the love of Jesus Christ in that room. I'm going to get something out of it. I'm going to learn something that I didn't know. And I'm looking forward to that. And then it's good to fellowship with other people that love you. That understand you. That want to spend time with you. That want to, that want to be a friend of Jesus. If you want to be someone's friend, then tell them about Jesus. And the greatest love that they'll ever know is in that relationship with him. But the other disciples came in, came in the little boat, but for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. You know what I thought about? My thought? I thought, wait a minute, that, that net is so full of fish and it's heavy and them other guys are pulling and all of a sudden Peter's just gone. Isn't that just like Peter to leave the work to them? I mean, I was like... I wonder if they're like, hey, Pete, where are you going? What, why are you letting go? This is heavy. We're going to lose them. Can you carry the load, Pete? You know why Peter left? Because his eyes were on Jesus. And if his eyes is on Jesus, he knew that Jesus was going to bring the net in. There was plenty of power. There was plenty of power. Jesus could have brought that net in. Peter's eyes were on Jesus and he couldn't stand it any longer. That's all he could think about was getting close to his Savior. He wanted to know God's love. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there. And the fish laid it on and the bread. Fish laid on it and the bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there was so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of them disciples dared ask him, who are you, knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. 
This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples and after he was, after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. When he says, feed my lambs, he's talking about the new believer. He's talking about the, the new believer that just came to Christ. He's talking about the children or the person that's just became saved. You'll notice that as the text goes on, he goes from lambs to sheep. But here he is in that first moment, and he's saying, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? He said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. So he went the second time from, from saying, Peter, take care of my sheep, protect them. You, you're going to be the leader of this flock, but you've got to love me first. You've got to know what my love is to be correct with me, to be humble. Can you imagine? Just take somebody really close to you. What, what if Carrie was sitting there saying three times, Troy, do you love me? That third time, I'd start to feel like, well, honey, you know that I love you. What, what do I got to say? What do I got to do so, so you know that you love me? But I know that in that moment, Peter and the Holy, Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ is going into Peter, and Peter's remembering when he denied Christ. He's remembering that when he said, Jesus, I'll go with you no matter what, no matter if anybody else does, I'll die for you, and he didn't. And Jesus is backing up and he's taking every moment. And he's replacing, listen, if you don't hear anything else I say today, the Holy Spirit just dropped this. He's taking all of Peter's failures and replacing it with his love. He's taking all of your failures and replacing it with his love. So there's nothing that's gone on in your life today that Jesus hasn't covered with his love at the cross, the finished work of the cross. So Jesus is asking you today, do you love me? Do you care about me? And then he's telling you to go feed his sheep. Lo love makes a way for us to forgive. Who do you need to forgive today? Who's offended you that you're holding a grudge? Listen, if you want healing, you've got to forgive first. If you're walking through a tough relationship that wasn't good, doesn't mean you've got to hang out with them, but you've got to forgive them. And then the healing will start. The foundation of forgiveness is knowing God's love. Knowing God's love. Love causes us to make sacrifices for others and put our needs last. Jesus' love for you caused him to make the greatest sacrifice of all time. If Jesus didn't love us, he wouldn't have went to the cross. Jesus set a standard and, and, and a picture for us to see and to live after that, Pastor Troy, you don't know what that person's done for me and I done to me, and I can't quite let go. Let me ask you, what have you done to Jesus in your sins? But Jesus' love sent him all the way to the cross for your sins and your failures. And you get to start over. 
<coughs> Peter was getting to start over. Peter was getting ready to start a ministry. And he had to know Jesus' love. And he needed to know what it looked like. Peter, listen to me. The, they're going to fail you. you. The people that walk underneath you are, are going to say that they love you and then they're going to deny me and they're going to come at you. But do you love them anyway, Peter? Peter, when those soldiers crucify you upside down, do you love them? Will you speak love over them as they're driving the nails? Do you love them? That's the kind of love that God wants us to see today. God erases our burdens through his love. And without God's love, there will never be a firm foundation in your life to stand on. Mark chapter 12, verse 30 and 31. And you shall love the Lord your God with what? All your heart with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. So that's the place we start. If there's no other greater commandment than these, the place to start is love. Listen, you can't have a successful relationship with Christ or anyone else if there's not. And love looks like this. It's patient. It's kind. It's long-suffering. It's forgiving. Remember the scripture in 1 Corinthians, I think it's the 13th verse, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. The greatest one of everything is love, because if you know God's love, then you have hope. Your, your faith cannot be moved without God's love. Love will take you places where faith can't. Carrie and I were talking about that this morning, honey. But love and faith go together. And when Peter understood God's love, Jesus' love for him, God the Father's love, when he understood that, he was willing to go the distance. So Jesus was getting the point across, Peter, do you love me? Because without love, you won't have the correct kind of faith that moves mountains. God's love endures forever. Psalms 136. And this is in the NLT version. So the New King James Version says his mercy endures forever. But I... I stumbled across this in the New Living Translation. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Isn't that amazing how we just talked about love and faith and then it says faithful love? God's faithful love endures forever and you're not going anywhere without God's love. Well, wait a minute. Let me rephrase that. Because that's not exactly true. If you don't know God's love, then you're not going to his kingdom. So you are going somewhere. It's heaven or hell, you choose people. Well, Pastor Troy, you're being pretty forward. No, that's what scripture says. Too far, too long have pastors candy coated everything they said instead of just being honest, being truthful. I told you guys last week, you get to choose the Dr. Pepper or Pepsi, and just like that, you get to choose heaven or hell. It's up to you. That's the truth of the gospel. But when you know Jesus' love, you get the Pepsi and the Dr. Pepper. You get both. Because there's an abundant harvest coming. That was kind of cheesy, wasn't it, Marvin? <laughs> Let's get back to Scripture. Give thanks to God, to the God of gods. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who alone does mighty miracles of faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavens so skillfully his faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who placed the earth among the waters his faithful love endures forever. 
Give thanks to him who made the heavenly lights, his faithful love endures forever. The sun to rule the day, his faithful love endures forever. And the moon and the stars to rule the night, his faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who killed the firstborn of Egypt, his faithful love endures forever. He brought out Israel out of Egypt, his faithful love endures forever. He acted with a strong hand and a powerful arm, his faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who parted the Red Sea, his faithful love endures forever. He led Israel safely through, his faithful love endures forever. But he hurled Pharaoh and the, and the army into the Red Sea, his faithful love endures forever. You guys listen. Pharaoh didn't understand God's love. How can you not? see God's hand moving that everything that came against Pharaoh, Pharaoh chose his power and this world over God's love. I believe God gave Pharaoh many chances to turn his face towards him. It says he hardened his heart. But time after time after time, and even when Pharaoh had lost everything and he lets all of Israel go, he turns and chases and the lack of love and consideration for God sent him to his death. And think of Moses just walking with Jesus, walking with the Lord's voice. His faithful love endured forever. How could Moses, Moses was able to say that when the Red Sea parted and he saw time after time that God fed them in the desert. He said, God's faithful love endured circumstance after circumstance and Psalms 136 talks about God's faithful love enduring forever. Over and over again, you've got to see God's faithful love. Worship team, if you'll come forward. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 4. Let all that you do be done in love. Let all that you do be done in love. Colossians 3, 14 says, And above all, put a love which binds everything together in perfect unity. Love is the glue that holds everything together in harmony. Listen, I want to close with this. And I don't know if I gave you 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. Trent, there it is. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. Who are we supposed to love? One another. For love will cover what? And Jesus went to the cross with what? Love. And that love covered our sin. It's like when the snowstorm comes and the snow covers all the earth. White as snow, pure as milk. It just covers, snow just covers everything perfectly. God's love over your sin is like that. If you have sin in your life today and it's tearing you up and eating you apart, you can say that God's love, Jesus' love, covers your sin and it's no more when you ask Him to forgive you. If you've asked Jesus to forgive you, then it's done. It's finished. Love covers a multitude of sin. And that love created a sacrifice in Jesus Christ that he's asking us to share with other people. But that very love in Jesus' heart took him all the way to the cross to cover our sins. Amen. I'm here to tell you today that Jesus has changed my life when I figured out that he loved me. I figured out that he cared for me. So I want you to walk with him today in love. I want you to consider that conversation that he had with Peter. Peter, do you love me? And that scripture says to cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. And allow the peace and the love of Jesus Christ to so rule in your heart and mind. 
allow it to race your burdens that you don't need to carry them with you anymore. Amen. Amen. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand.
Romans 8, 28 says, All things, all things that work together for good, those that love God, love Him, and call them for His purpose. Amen? My prayer today is that you walk out of here knowing that Jesus loves you, knowing that you have a Savior, that you just get to ask Him into your heart, ask Him into your life. Don't walk this earth without Jesus any longer. Don't walk this earth without knowing personally. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray the peace of God over your family here. And I thank you for your love, Jesus. I thank you for, for your heart, God, that you, you sent your son, Jesus, to die for us. And so, Father, I pray that we take that same love and we go out and disciple the people we love, the people we care for, the people. So, Lord, to that end, I pray over your people by the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.